Ryan, you're going to be talking to us. All, I'm going to be talking about the Jason Aldean video controversy. I know you're a huge Jason Aldean fan. <laughs> Kidding. I, uh, have you heard of Jason Aldean? Nope. Okay. Looking forward to learning uh, about this person. Right. But <laughs> before that, you're going to talk to us about Marjorie Taylor Greene. What do you got for us today? Incredible development in the presidential campaign. Uh, an endorsement uh, by Marjorie Taylor Greene of the Biden agenda, the, the greatest political ad, uh, <laughs> definitely of this cycle, maybe of the last 10 cycles. Uh, let's roll this one. Joe Biden had the largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, labor unions, and he still is working on it. Okay, when I first saw her speech at, uh, which was it, the- Turning Point. Yeah, the Turning Point USA thing. I wondered, I was like, are they gonna turn this into uh, a 30 second campaign ad? Because I would if I were them. And sure enough, they did. And this is not a deep fake. This is not AI produced. This was the speech that Marjorie Taylor Greene gave. If there was any deception at all, it would be in the, where they ended it. Because of course she doesn't end it right there. She kind of is upset about what she says is the fallout uh, of, some, of some of that FDR, LBJ, Biden agenda. So, so just for the sake of honesty and transparency, like here is kind of the rest of what MTG said. That is actually finishing what FDR started that LBJ expanded on and Joe Biden is attempting to complete socialism. Meanwhile, we are now $32 trillion in debt with record high homelessness, 40 year record inflation. We're losing the US dollar as the number one world currency. We're losing our freedoms. Our government is one big fat bloated machine and it's killing the American dream. So a bunch of technocratic stuff about the budget uh, and it's killing the American dream and it's socialism. Uh, Bernie Sanders gave kind of the same speech during the 2020 campaign where he said, you guys say that I'm a socialist. I call myself a democratic socialist. Let me tell you what I mean by democratic socialism. And he couched it at, in the spirit of FDR and the legacy of FDR. He said, I'm, I'm an FDR Democrat. Biden, when he was really feeling his oats in early 2021, said the same thing, that he wanted to be, you know, wanted to be another FDR. And that's when he really pushed forward with this, this like really aggressive kind of agenda that was then whittled away by Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Uh, but if you want to wrap that all in socialism, okay, fine. It's government spending, fine, call it socialism. Uh, I d did, like, what, what is Marjorie Taylor Greene doing here? Like, just reading off what, could, what literally was turned into a campaign ad for, for Joe Biden. I think it's still a blind spot for the right how favorable the public is to social spending um, and infrastructure investments and uh, just like the the basics of environmental protection, et cetera, et cetera. And so, the whole thing. Uh, yeah, like actually the ad isn't entirely unfair to Marjorie Taylor Greene. And that's why I thought it was smart that you played the other video because you can see that is, uh, it's, it's definitely spliced up, but there's a chunk of her speech that was basically word for word, like a portion of it is basically word for word. Um, and, and so where you've seen other conservative populists like your J.D. Vance's uh, have a really smart approach to this and mm -hmm. say, we need to look at uh, how government can be smarter. We don't necessarily need a much bigger government, but we do need a smarter government where we're investing in things that will actually improve the everyday lives of the average American. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, on the other hand, is I still think underestimating how powerful that rhetoric is from Democrats, mm -hmm. um, especially Democrats that are now part of the Republican base because they came in with Donald Trump, who did talk about that. He said everybody was going to have health care uh, in a way that sounded like, you know, maybe an um, M4A. Obviously, he probably wasn't going to do Medicare for all. I don't think anybody thought that. But he, he basically tried to uh, couch the Republican repeal position with everybody's gonna have health care. Um, and so I think there's some, there's a strain of post-Trump conservative populism that really understands this. And there's another strain that um, is too resistant 
probably to some of the things that you need to make it palatable. I think that's a really good point that somebody like J.D. Vance would never make that mistake. Absolutely. Like not. he'd see that and be like, wait, we're going to go up here and attack Medicaid and Medicare and spending on education and environmental protection. Right. right. Why? Why would we? Why would we situate ourselves that way? But those two are yeah. roughly in the same camp. Exactly. You know, right. Yeah. But I think MTG is an interesting bird. Her her history is not as clean, I think, as people would think. Yeah. She, she burst onto the scene. But correct me if I'm getting some of the biography wrong here. But I, she was kind of in it an Atlanta metro area mm -hmm. like mainstay kind of Republican climber who wanted to be a player in the like local Republican scene. I think just and, like since the Trump era. I, but I, and then she moved out to. It was it was when she got up to Northwest Georgia that she really burst onto the scene. Mm -hmm. um, now she was always. It, it, people will think that when I'm saying that she was kind of a more of a mainline Republican player in the in the Metro Atlanta area that that I'm saying that she's kind of a moderate, but that's not that misunderstands yeah. kind of what that kind of slice of the Republican Party is. You can still be Q flirtatious and you know f you know f Facebook brained and be you know a, a you know, county vice chair of your of your local part of your local Republican Party, and be an ambitious kind of politician. Uh, so it doesn't mean that she's she went from moderate to extreme, but it, she was always kind of a partisan Republican. And then, and, but it also felt like when she, if people watch her, her earlier part of her speech, it also felt like she thought she was telling people things about uh, LBJ that was news to them. She's like, LBJ was Senate Majority Leader. And then she ad-libs, does that sound familiar to you? She's trying to make comparisons to Biden, which she presumably thought Biden at some point was Senate Majority Leader. Like, it shows a, a real unfamiliarity with political history, mm -hmm. which suggests, and not just history, but like, you know, this is, this is recent stuff, which, which suggests that she's just, she's, she's driven a lot more by vibes. And like you said, maybe like really pulled in by Trump. Yeah. And so isn't kind of rooted in some type of coherent ideology that she can express outside of Trumpism. Yeah. So she and she says that she was pulled into politics and like really became politically active around the 2016 presidential cycle that Donald Trump like really animated something. She strikes me as somebody who probably voted R um, or sat out some elections, but generally voted right. Republican in big elections, like probably voted for Romney in 2012 and McCain in 2008. Considered I don't know. herself independent maybe ish. Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Right. And I actually think that's what's interesting about her is that she was a suburban, like small business person. Um, I think, it, I don't know if it was her business or what, but like a CrossFit, at a CrossFit gym, um, who got really deep into 9-11 conspiracy theories, which she has a lot of people missed because the media didn't cover it as much, but has since walked back. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to say, like, that's not a defense of Marjorie Taylor Greene, but actually it, it is a defense of, because I think it's important to highlight when people pivot, mm -hmm. especially when they come to Washington D and say, I can assign so much of what I previously assigned to conspiracy to incompetence. Um, and that's what you <laughs> see up close when you yes. come to Washington, D.C. And so I, I think it, that makes her a really interesting person, somebody who was on the sidelines. Uh, the media talks all the time about how many people are Q curious or, you know, like actually easily sucked into the QAnon stuff. Uh, and you have someone right here who can talk about how and why that happened, um, and she has. And again, it's gotten less coverage than the conspiracy theories themselves did, um, even though I think it's it's much more interesting. Um, so yeah, like this this is a very much like post-Trump uh, reality. This is very much the post-Trump reality for the Republican Party, and they can either sort of coalesce and do the J.D. Vance thing, um, which I would argue is, is smarter, uh, and especially with Chevron deference on the docket coming up, this idea that like government needs to, uh, like th there's a populist case against cronyism between big government and big business, um, you can do that. Or you can start going after FDR and LBJ, both of whom I think did very destructive things, but generally people like them. And you have to meet people where they are in order to be persuasive. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. Uh, 
it, it's a really interesting window into this kind of developing kind of populist Republican mind. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.